Well, it's only taken me nearly three years to do it, but I'm finally doing an educational voiceover of Dulcinea's labor and delivery of her foal, Kalimba. Um, as some of you may know, Dulcinea came to us as a skinny, malnourished, wild two-year-old, and um, obviously she was not in great shape during this delivery, but we'd only had her for nearly two weeks at that point. Um, if you are concerned about her condition, feel free to check out more recent videos. You can see she is happy and healthy now. Um, anyway, I'll just jump right into it. So I came out in the morning around 9 a.m. to feed and clean her pen, top up her water, etc. I was actually on my way up to Peachland that morning and I was surprised to see that she appeared to be, um, you know, ready for labor, which is super unusual for horses from any walk of life. Generally, horses will give birth in the wee hours of night under cover of darkness, usually between like 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. So I definitely did not expect her to give birth in the middle of the day. Um, and I definitely didn't expect her to come to me and lay down at my feet and start pushing. That was that was a big surprise to me. But I think that she just felt safe with me and my kids. You know, theoretically, this may be the first time in her life that she has felt relatively safe because growing up wild in an area with not a lot of food, she was probably plagued by hunger a lot of the time, fear of um, predation. And it's it was an honor, really, for her to choose to deliver with us right there. Oh, you can see her little nose poking out. So I didn't have my phone with me when she started um, laboring. I sent my daughter in to grab my phone. Um, so of course, by the time the video started, her feet were already protruding. And you can see that they are still wrapped in the amniotic sac. And a lot of people ask, what is that? That, that white plastic that's around her. And it's not plastic, but you can think of it like an organic water balloon, basically. It is called an amniotic sac, or you can also call it fetal membranes. Some people also call it um, a birth sac, uh, but the technical term is just an amniotic sac. And the fluid that's in it is called amniotic fluid. And basically the, um, the unborn foal develops in this protective sac, um, kind of like a like a, a water balloon and it floats around inside there and that's what keeps it safe from things like other horses kicking it and from the impact of the mare running um, things like that and of course as the foal gets bigger there's less fluid and less room for her to move around in um, but it's the same fluid that when you see a video like a, a movie and a woman goes into labor and she's like oh my gosh my water broke that is the amniotic sac rupturing and the amniotic fluid gushing out. And this this isn't really a medical emergency, but of course it has to be dramatic on TV. Um, but in this particular case, uh, the fluid has already mostly come out and the foal is still wrapped up, but we can see she's not hanging limp and lifeless. There's no need for interference. A lot of people have said things like, why didn't you tear open the sack so the foal can breathe? Well, I'll tell you why. She doesn't need it. Foals have been born in the wild for millions of years, long before humans took it upon themselves to interfere. This is how it's done. I know a lot of people will say, oh, but we have to do it for cows. Well, cows are a little different. Um, there have been cases of cows having extremely thick amniotic sacs that did not rupture on their own, but it has not been an issue with horses. And unless I see evidence of that being an issue, I'm not going to step in. I'm going to stay back and give the horse space to do her thing. Now, ordinarily, mares will get up and reposition and walk around and get up, lay down, get up, lay down, that kind of thing. What's really surprising is that Dulcinea picked one spot to lay down and she did not get up. She just just plowed right through it, just got the job done. Uh, a lot of people will also say, well, why didn't you help? Like, you can see she's exhausted here. No, she's not. Like, it's normal for delivery to take up to like 30 minutes, sometimes even more. And as long as delivery is progressing, it's best to just stand back and let the horse do her own thing. Um, the thing is, is that her vaginal walls need time to adjust to having this, this 
huge foal passing through. They need to be able to stretch out naturally to accommodate the passage of this foal. If I get impatient for my own selfish human reasons and I grab that foal and yank her out, like for starters, those delicate little legs, they need to be strong and healthy and undamaged for the next, you know, 20 years. Um, it's not a cow who's going to get slaughtered in two years tops. This is a horse who needs to stay sound and able to compete potentially in order to guarantee her lifelong safety. A lot of people won't keep a lame horse that they can't ride. So I would be doing her a huge disservice by causing her soft tissue damage just to haul her out of there if there's not a legitimate medical emergency. And a, a healthy, normal birth is not a medical emergency. I'm just going to stand back and watch. And if there is any issues like signs of placenta previa or that the umbilical cord has been compromised or that the foal is not progressing um, through the mare, like if, if there's a point where they get stuck or there's evidence of hip lock or something like that, then yeah, then I would consider, you know, what's the next step to take. But in this case, I'm just going to stand back and let her do her own thing. We're only, we're not even seven minutes into pushing and she's doing great. So now she's at the hardest part here. Um, the shoulders and chest is the largest, like the widest part of the foal to push out. And even in this, she does not need my help. You can see she is doing fine on her own. And we're still, we're not even at seven minutes yet. So there's nothing wrong with what is happening here. The horse does not need my help. And, you know, not just damage to the foal can be caused by pulling, but look at the way that her body is stretching to accommodate this baby. You know, this is, it's a slow, gradual thing. If I was to grab that foal and pull her out and rush that kind of expansion, that's going to cause vaginal tears. I don't know if you've ever had a tear in your vagina. I have. It's not pleasant. So it's best to let Mother Nature do her thing. And, you know, she's designed to, to gradually stretch out to accommodate this foal and causing the mare unnecessary trauma just because I'm a human and I'm impatient. That's awful. It's not necessary. So let's just stand back and watch. And there we go. So we can see now that in the foal stretching out, she has torn the sack herself. There was no need for me to interfere. So her little nose is out. Now that she's out of the mare, she'll actually be able to, you know, inflate her lungs and breathe. Prior to that, when she's in the mare, the amount of force that's being exerted on her body by those contractions, she's not going to be able to inflate her lungs anyway. So to those people saying, you need to tear the sack so her nose can breathe. No, you don't. All you got to do is just be patient. And unless the mare is having legitimate difficulty getting that foal out, your best bet's just to stand back and watch and, and observe and be there to help if there's a need for it. Now, at this point, it's best for the mom and the baby to just just chill out. There's no rush. There's no need to get over there and dry her out. There's no need to peel off the sack. It does not suddenly turn into lava. They can stay there, you know, 15, 20 minutes, even half an hour, just resting. It's, it's important. They just, they just went through a big thing. So now we're just going to watch and let the foal get up when she wants to.